we'll put it on there also. So uh, you can always come back and look at these things and study them on YouTube. You won't be able to trade off of them because they'll be out of date, but you can study. Them. Excellent. We got a green market, 203 points on the Dow. Um, charts are still settling in. Our spreads are very tradable though. We're coming down to two cent spreads on on most things. Three cents uh, some places, but only for a second, and then it'll go back to one or two. Um, certainly not very quick movement so far this morning, but. Hopefully this begins to open up for us. We'll see. <clears throat> Pretty slow movement uh, so far this morning. Yeah, very. Hey, Tony, yesterday somebody did an SPY, reported on doing an SPY transaction with a huge return. Do you remember how much that was? Uh, um, I don't know exactly who it was. It was, I think it was two trades for like a total of 12% or something like that. Yeah. Huge return, though. Yeah. Yes, it is. Um... David asks, by slow movement, do you refer to the option prices? Uh, just to look at, I mean, uh, the overall volume for right now is, is relatively low. Um, a lot of ha a lot of stuff happened, you know, after hours in trading. And so that's what, you know, made the price shoot up two bucks here in Q. Um, and it's just kind of, the volume of it, <laughs> excuse me, the volume of uh, the current, you know, situation, I guess you could say, is just really low. And yeah, if you're watching that, that in its an example is, yeah, the option prices are not moving hardly at all. Um, since we got on here, the, um, let's see, 185 call has only gone down like six cents and it keeps fluctuating back and forth. So there's no... Uh, no real significant um, volume right now. Not very many making. Not very many people making uh, that many of trades. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if the day, you know, rest of the day is like this due to just. You know, everything that's happened this week with the China news and the huge, you know, 800 point slide, you know, it's been a pretty hectic week for the stock market. So I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of just chills. Global chills. warming. Yeah. Huh. Um, Lannon, given the prices today, what strikes would we be looking at? QQQ 184 is at 60 cents. Uh, yeah, so you just want to, it's, um, you still want to stick around at the money. At the money right now is, um, 185. You don't really want to go, you could actually go maybe one in the money. Um, it still has a good amount of volatility. Friday's a little weird, so. You're looking at one out of the money and maybe one in the money um, and certainly at the money. So you're kind of all over around there. But if you, I mean, if you're look, if you have your bid size and ask size columns on, on your layout for your platform, you know, just choose the, you know, choose the strike that has the most fluctuation in the highest number of bid size ask size proportion. Um, and that's just a good 
a good way to choose which truck to go with because you haven't they'll have enough or plenty amount of um options to go around <clears throat> to get filled I believe Apple's up 249 and Q2's up uh, 204, 205, yeah. 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 A bit of a narrowing action coming on and... Um... We'll go ahead and just prep the 184.5 strike call. Yeah, that's what we're going to do on the Apple as well at the 205. <clears throat> See if we can get any sort of significant push. Everything's green in the market. question can you talk about more about the bid ask size and how to read it um yeah the bid ask size is just, is just the amount of um contracts that have been traded at that current time and usually you know with you know the bigger they are the bigger the number is it just shows how much um easier it is to get your um get your order filled um for instance if you look at uh if you look at you know one out of the money one or two out of the money that we typically trade on usually you will see fluctuations of two and three hundred and four hundred and six hundred eight you know whatever amount of contracts being traded at a single time so when you see those you know that there's a lot of a lot of action and a lot of movement uh, within the trading on that strike. So you just want to kind of just go with the flow, per se. And then open interest is just how many contracts that are um, currently being held at that strike. So just a little. Yeah, call didn't push up hardly at all, so yeah, I'll cancel that. That was uh, not necessarily for the put, though. That was very underwhelming. Yeah. We cancel the call as well. Um, question from here from Michael. Tony, when you are exiting a position and we hear you say that you are waiting to try to get a certain price, are you just watching the bid price on the phone and, and selling when that price appears or are you actually adjusting the bid price yourself? Um, all right, so we talk about this a lot. When you, before you go into a trade, okay, you need to have some idea of a profit target that you want to hit. You know, we always usually try to, <clears throat> always usually, huh, we usually try to get about four cents on average. If you, you know, go back and listen to the, all the webinars and whatever, usually it's about four cents. We try to get that target. Sometimes, it, you know, depending on the volatility at the current time, we might change that. We'll cancel that and just, um, try for a different target. But the key is always to have a profit target because um, it gets you into that routine of having a plan and trading your plan. And it sets you up for just consistent, consistent, consistent results. And so you wanna have the profit target already 
somewhat planned in your mind before you hit that, you know, <clears throat> that send order. And, um, and then if it's moving up really fast, then yeah, just, just cancel that, um, sell a close you have your, of your profit target and just move it up. Um, so that's, that's key for, uh, exiting positions. Um, so that is when, when I say we're trying to get a certain price, uh, that's because that's how much I want to get out of this trade. And that's, that's essential for when you're trading because you don't want to go in there just with a blank check. You want to have a, you want to have a strategy of how to exit just like you have strategy to enter. All right. Uh, from David again, does push up or down refers to the <laughs> heading up, down, and Bolger is expanding too? Uh, yeah, and just push down means the tick's going down. That's the direction of the, you know, it's being over, it's going towards the oversold position. So a lot of people are selling their positions. It just means, that's pretty much what it means. Have this call doing something on Apple. It's been a pretty tight range, so I wanted to come up here and just get rejected right away. But looking at that 205. Yeah, I was going to prep the uh, 184.5 strike call. Just prep that, keep it open. Um, we might. Uh, Make a move on this here. Possibly, maybe not. Um, does the size of open of the open interest help you choose a strike? Thanks so much. This is from Marianne. Um, no, not really, to be honest. Um, there's because there's so many options available that uh, that doesn't doesn't matter as much, I guess you could say. Uh, you just want to get into a comfortable range where you can get your orders filled. That's the only reason we we uh, talk about what strike we're choosing. And uh, typically... And I feel like that's like... Sorry. No, go ahead. Um, I'm just going to pop in here. I feel like that's the most common question we get um, is which strike to select, which is... A little bit odd because it doesn't really matter. Um, like people talk about the delta and all that stuff. If you have good volume, um, you know, and and delta, it certainly isn't accurate. I've been watching specifically that all, all week. Um, you know, trying to study how the the option price price moves in reference to the stock, and uh, the delta is not even accurate, and the delta is constantly changing. Um, but also, I mean. So at the 200 strike put on Apple, for instance, you're at 15, 16 cents, you only have a 10 delta, um, you know, but if you almost triple it up to 47, 49 on the next strike down, then, you know, the delta moves up as well. So unless you go really far, you're going to see an effect on how fast it moves. But if you're in that range, anywhere from, from one in the money to, um, you know, three out of the money, it's, it's going to be a little bit different, but just, you know, take a glance at the volume, try to get one out of the money and try to stay around a dollar. It's, it's a very loose like process. It's, it's not super stringent. Um, if you see any outliers, like one, one with super low volume or one with a huge spread, uh, then change it up. But other than that, you know, it's not, it's not as huge of a deal. Um, that's also super, super helpful for if we're prepping and you miss the strike, um that's okay if you hear it's a call or a put you can you can go in from there and still be able to make that trade um yeah. so yeah yeah that's great stuff um the, the only reason we choose out of the money is because there seems to be a little bit more <clears throat> um contracts to trade with there uh especially in this shorter time so um yeah, so that's why we that's why we're using that um, strike. There's really it's, there's no scientific reason why. I mean, frankly, you can use any strike you want, um, but usually around 
the dollar mark is like we what we want to stick with because it's easier to do math and usually that's where a lot of um trading is is done and stuff like that it, on that specific option chain so uh, yeah uh question from joseph here tony regarding open interest when you said the number of contracts being held do you mean the number of contracts available no um <clears throat> not available what they are being held so someone has a certain number of of contracts that they are just holding it's in the market but it's they're not available so um so that's what that means um and if you got questions just you know google open interest sometimes they give you better explanations of what we what we give you um especially like with open interest bid and ask size stuff like that um bid and ask size is a little confusing to be honest at least it is to me but um Hopefully we're able to keep make that a little clear. Um, up here, I don't know if we'll, <clears throat> haven't entered yet because coming up on the high a day, uh, and the range has been super tight. But we're finally opening up on the Bollingers. A little bit of room. Um. <clears throat> Yeah, we're keeping an eye on this on Q as well. See what, uh, see if we can get a little flare here. Um, yeah, so Joseph hope that it helps that uh, open interest question. All right, there. I hopped into that. Sorry, Tony. All good. Hopped into that just now. I feel that 91, it's bouncing around. Top right out here at 80. Let's see if it decides to push. There we go. A couple seconds delay, but whew, that was a little scary. What did it's you get out now, of? Though. We're gonna hop in here on well, two. I almost, almost pulled out for a loss, but I didn't. Um, let's sell to close for ninety-five. Build that or let's try to get nine. right. Build that seventy-seven. Right? Right? That sure. They hold that seventy-seven cents. Four point four percent good. Uh, let's set a set of close for, um, well, let's see if we can get 80. We might have to adjust back down. It looks like it's stalling out here. What, what, what'd you buy it for? Cents. Yep. Let's go ahead and hop out. Build at 70, 75 cents. Oh no, 76. Sorry. One All second. Right, I finally filled out of that. So you lost. Go ahead guys. You lose, you lose a penny. Yep. Um, we got out at ninety-seven cents on the Apple call. Is this another Apple? No, this is this is the first one I was in. I I, I was I was thinking about getting out um, for a small loss, but I gave it another second and it did push. So ninety-one to ninety-five on that. Nice. Yeah. No, no, no. I, is that, is, that the first, is that the first apple you've done? Um, only done one. Okay. One, one apple. Okay. Yeah, I think I said 97, um, but it was actually 95. So 91 to 95. Yeah, okay, that's what I had the first time, yeah. Okay. All right, we got out of that queue. It's all the way down to 69 cents now, so that would have been, uh, that would have been a bummer. Um, but uh, did not uh, did not gain as much speed as Apple, um, so there's just really no, not a lot of volume going on. Um, it's already, you know, almost 10 o'clock, and it's only at uh, 4.3 million shares have been traded, so it's not very significant for Q. Um, go back to these questions here. Uh, my uh, Michael, my question is more about the mechanics of how you exit a position. Do you watch the bid price change on think or swim and sell when your target is reached, or do you already have a sell order placed? Yeah, no, it's uh, we always when I go into a trade, all right, let's set our set of close to you know, etc. So I go into that trade and I set the 
the uh, sell the clothes as soon as I enter the trade. And then um, if it doesn't hit that, then I'll adjust. If it hits it really quick, or that I see a price fluctuation moving very fast, then I will cancel it and just um, let it ride for a little bit. So, but always go in with a profit target and have that profit target set for, uh, as you enter. Um, let's see, David, uh, another question from David here. See you both consistently entering with a tick spikes up, down, when the E lines are lined up and enter early in the movement. Very impressive. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. We've uh, seen this a lot of times, so we're kind of um, used to it, I guess. Uh, another question from David. Why the dollar mark? Uh, you have a better chance of getting your four cent goal than, say, at a 50 cent strike. Um, not really, uh, not really understanding that question. Um, Micah, do you understand that that one? Uh, BZ, I'm guessing, is because you have a better chance of getting your four cent goal than at a 50 cent strike. Oh, meaning the 50 cent strike moves slower. So if you want four cents, do you go with the dollar so that it moves um, faster? Um, Friday, guys, is is an outlier. Um, if you buy a 50 cent option on Tuesday or Wednesday, yeah, it's going to take a while to move. Um, on Friday, one out of the money, or sorry, at the money on on the Apple put is 34 cents, uh, and it's at a 24 delta. So that puts moving fast. Um, you know, it, it there's it just moved four cents just now. I just saw it. So um you know there's there's a lot more ability on friday and that's why we have had our record days on friday and it's just a whole different ball game but typically um yes we want you know midweek early week we want to get closer to that dollar mark because those lower price options um <clears throat> earlier on move super slow so sure. okay, just for the time of the week because we have you know the option prices are expiring today so you know we have to kind of gauge that all throughout the week and um and so does the whole market and you can see that by the amount of the uh, certain action points at certain strikes are a little higher so we kind of just try to follow the flow there's, there's no real science here just like to choose it just because uh, that's where there seems to be good success. So don't get don't get bogged down with all these little details of strikes and deltas and open interest um, yeah. because it doesn't really matter to be honest. Here, here's, uh, the, here's the email sent in by George. Uh, George, try to use the, uh, the 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 question box on uh, on the uh, I'm going to webinar, but I will go ahead and read this one here. And this is directed to Tony and Mike. Both of you have what feels like anticipatory instincts on the data, E1, 2, 3, volume, and such. Can you share how long you've been trading with CSC and how long did it take you to have the confidence in the signals that you trade with today? Regards, George. Um, yeah, so the best way I mean, you can answer it is we've been doing this a lot longer than when this program is available. So the more you do it and watch these charts every day. So of all of the, of all of the available techniques that um, the micro moment trading company has to offer this one, the micro moment trading technique itself is the one that requires the most time and the most time dedication. Um, I mean, we have to get on here at least an hour or so every single day. And, um, you know, when the market closes, we'll go back, we'll study the movements of, of the day at certain points and uh, take a look at, you know, well, you know, the position there and then compare it to when we enter the trade, this and that. And so 
the more you you know study these charts and, and watch the charts, you're going to get better at uh, predicting when there's a good time to get into a trade. And it, just look at okay, for instance, let's look at um, uh, so E2 and E3. They're still slightly in the call position. It was a little stronger a little a couple minutes ago. So right now it's a little little uh, harder to see, but E2, E3 in call position, okay? And uh, let's go back to somewhere that's a little clearer. Um, so let's just use this one right here as an example, 941. All right, E2 clearly in call position. E3 is pretty good range uh, in the call position. So we kind of see this flattening out right here. You can see this flattening out. See, you can kind of see the flattening out here on uh, – on the points that's like what we call the exhaustion phase and so you can kind of see it working back up towards the blue line and so that's when we start anticipating the trade though all the answers are in the chart here um we're not you know we don't have some you know six cents or whatever trying to uh predict these trades but if you just watch the chart and see like look at it current time here it's looks like the ticks getting closer to to the signal line, to the blue line here, about to cross over. So we're preparing, you know, if this was in a good, if E2 and E3 were in a good, uh, you know, good enough position, we'd probably prep something and, and get in a trade, but it's just moving too slow today. But um, if you're looking at it though, <clears throat> uh, red is, is seemingly getting closer to blue, getting that little bit of a pinch. And then after that little pinch, it crosses. And then that's usually where you try to hop in uh, into a trade and stuff like that. So all the answers are in the chart. It just, we've been doing it, looking at these charts for so long that we just get used to seeing the same patterns over and over and over. And, um, and, and so that is why we are able to, I guess, anticipate trades a little more clearly, but uh, the more you get to um, understanding the whole process, you know, um, of how it moves, and on this on this uh, on this chart here, get the get the book um, "Advanced Charting Techniques for High Probability Trading." Uh, Joe wrote that, and it's uh, and the other author wrote the book about these specific charts and that'll give you even a better understanding of uh, how the chart works what we're looking at etc cetera, etc cetera. and um you know just compare and contrast what it has to say with what we're doing and over time you're going to get better at it that's just how it is so um but thanks for the question there george uh tim asks do you guys start each session with the profit goal would you care to share what what like to see out of a typical session in terms of profit um no we don't have a set number we don't say Actually, all right i would say to discourage it a lot um mm -hmm. a side note we're looking at this uh the put the 205 uh sorry call again 205 call again on apple it might be setting up but we'll wait for it to open up uh, e1's out of place um <clears throat> But uh, if you set a profit goal and it's low, then you're limiting yourself. And if it's high, then you're saying that you know the volatility of the market that day. Um, we've had days that the Dow is gapping up or down like three or 400 points uh, and it opens flat and it does nothing. Um, and this is such a volatility based strategy. Like you've seen it, you know, the days where it's moving a lot, our percentage is a lot higher. We can still make solid returns on, on, um, you know, slower days, but we don't know what that volatility is to, to begin with. Um, and then we're not also setting any unreasonable standards for ourselves because it is a day to day basis, how it moves, um, you know, how you're feeling, how alert you are, how, fast you are on the trigger like it all plays into it and if you set goals it's a very it's a very dangerous game like we want to make six percent a week you know because that's what we know we can always hit we've we've you know multiplied that by 50 some weeks and it just depends on that 
So, yeah, and that's, yeah, those are fantastic points, and I, yeah, hundred percent agree because the reason why it's dangerous is because then you know you have this certain profit that you want to profit target or this percentage you want to make a day, then you get greedy, and then greedy is very dangerous, and um, yeah. and you know you don't want to be too fearful where you never make a trade, but certainly you want to fight off greed because then you're just you know your your account will just tank because you're just constantly going after these trades and so there is no real profit target in mind we just base the profit target off of our current situation and then we apply that to the trade if we see it moving a lot okay let's see if we can get five or six cents if it's not okay let's see if we can get three cents four cents whatever and uh and if it goes up past that pretty quick okay great we'll cancel it and adjust and move on and try to get uh, a little bit more out of it but if not i don't know how many times we've had, mike and i have had a trades where we've only gotten four or five cents and then it turns out that the stock just keeps going and we could have got 20 or 30 cents okay yep. but if you have that mentality you will lose in the end uh to constantly chase these stocks constantly chase a better price etc cetera, etc cetera. Have a firm price set as you enter. Um, set that profit target, set that sort of close three or four cents or whatever out after you enter the trade and just let it come to you. Let trades come to you and be patient because if you try to chase the, tr the trades, you know, they're a lot faster and they'll run away from you a lot more than you can catch them. So you let the trade, let the situation line up to you let the uh, let the uh, lines all line up you know just let the trade come to you and work with what you got and then capitalize on it um and just 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 hone that skill so yeah the, i 100 percent agree do not have that mentality where you want to get a certain amount of day because <clears throat> um because uh that will greatly hinder your results and I mean, I don't know what the average is per day that we've been doing this. I mean, we're probably close to 2,500% in, what is it, three or four months now. And uh, if you divide that each day, it's probably 60 or 70% a day or something like that. I don't this, know. This is, today. today's the end of the 15th week. Right. Okay. That we've had the, serv we've had the service going uh, yeah. since, since it started. Now, y'all were doing this you know before we went public with it, so mm -hmm. yeah so we've been doing this for almost four months now but uh you just you just capitalize on what the market gives you each day and uh sometimes we don't make trades sometimes we do sometimes we don't you know but uh yeah don't go into it each day all right i need 10 or 12 percent I and mean, if you do that you got a lot of emotions you have to fight off and uh, that makes the trading a lot harder so great question there uh landon what's that i just completely agree with everything you just said it's oh yeah on base yeah i saw this question earlier mike i got into that apple put at 74 and out at 79 i don't know what you're talking about particularly 654 54 So I guess I, you probably just meant to um, you meant to type call and you typed put, but I was in it ninety one. So how early were you? But hey, I mean, either way, props for the profitable trade, regardless. But I'm I'm curious. Yeah, uh, great trade, Landon. That's good stuff. It's uh, nice, close to six percent probably, or somewhere around there. So it's good stuff there oh yeah uh, killer it went from 79 to yeah it started out at 69 to 94 so you got in really early you read that perfectly e1 two and three were crossing up or e3 was already above yeah that that bollinger spread started to happen that's that's a killer trade lennon yeah good stuff there you uh, just beat me by 20 cents on the entry wow yeah props for that one guy good job how yeah. much was the return i like six percent i think yeah he made five five cents on 74. yeah 
That's good. Um, this is from Peter. Uh, Tony, when you have a profit target set, do you enter the trade or hold until you see the number? Uh, no, no, no. You enter the trade, then you set the profit target. Um, yeah, you, you don't want to hold, then you'll miss it on the trade in, entirely. So get into the trade, kind of see how much volatility there currently is, and just say, okay, I want three cents. All right, I'll set our sort of close for 77 cents when I got in at 74 or whatever. Um, that's just how you do that. You don't want to hold it and then enter, then you'd miss the whole trade. Just enter, enter the trade, then sell, set that profit target or your sell close or what you want to get out of it. <clears throat> sometimes you have to adjust down if it moves too slow. Um, sometimes you got to cancel it because it's moving in the wrong direction. Uh, sometimes you have to cancel it because it's going too fast in the right direction. So you just a lot of different fidgeting and stuff like that. And so we don't really talk about the whole process on here because it'd get too confusing and chaotic and no one would really understand what we're doing. So um, that had to be more of like a seminar situation there. Uh, David, uh, yes, Micah, that's what I tried to say. Okay. Um, from Michael, Micah, it's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your cat is? Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> hey. Hey, we're working on that speed thing. You know, this virtual reality thing we're working on. You, uh, you, you buy, you blink your left eye, and you sell, you blink your right eye, and it's it really kind of speeds it really speeds things up. Not perfected yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> That'd be amazing. <laughs> You're just gonna need some eye drops because when you don't want to get into a trade, man, they're gonna get yeah. dry. I hope you remember which eye you're blinking because uh, that could be really <laughs> that could be a real mess. <laughs> Oh, goodness. All right, David. Uh, got it. Uh, David, Tony, thanks. Excellent. Um, this is from Peck. Do you see any value in using a shorter time frame in your chart? I have my personal chart set up for the last half hour. You're still looking at what happened at 3.30 yesterday. Uh, these are one-minute charts. Um, he means... Um the from left to right like the full thing you can zoom in on the on the ice charts oh 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 uh oh no this is i mean i just whatever you're comfortable with um like this peck because um we got two screens if you zoom in everything looks very dramatized and um if you're able to again it's totally you know whatever works best for you um, but if you zoom in, make sure you keep it in perspective that today, for instance, is really slow movement. Um, if you if you see into yesterday, if you see, you know, a couple hours, then then you can realize what type of scope. And if this really blew up, we would know that we would know the scale of what's happening right now because we know, you know, our subconscious knows what the gap was. We know kind of what it did yesterday. Um, it kind of gives you a, a picture but yeah yeah um just whatever you're comfortable with pretty much uh lannon tony yesterday you said that the contract size needed for profitability is about 50 is that based on the need for paying for commissions if so then how the heck can you be profitable at lower contract size no i was just saying that in just in general long term it just you can be profitable at 10 contracts uh, just depends on what your definition of profitability is. Um, you know, if you want it to be, you know, 10, 20 bucks profitability, or do you want to be, you know, hundreds, hundreds of dollars profitability. So, um, you know, choose whatever you're most comfortable with. That's completely your own decision. Mike and I are not going to tell you how many contracts to, to use because it's based off your, how much money is in your account. So, uh just use what you're comfortable with and um <clears throat> and go from there but uh, you can be possible <clears throat> yeah hey tony wouldn't wouldn't know better answer that so worried about probability and dollar amounts and worry about probability and return percent returns yeah yeah that's like, if you do 100 contracts and, and you do the exact same prices on 20 contracts your percent return is going to be the same mm -hmm. except for that one that fixed charge on a trade 
it's yeah. obviously cheaper per contract if you do 100 contracts versus if you do 20 contracts. So it's not yeah. a matter. I think is it, was that Landon that asked that question? Yeah, Landon. Yeah, you totally look. Don't don't look to look at return. Look at percent return. That's what's important, not the dollars. Yeah. Return because that's what you're comping. Yeah, exactly, and and exactly, and you can build off of the percentage a lot better than you can, you know, different contract sizes. So, yeah. just go with what you're comfortable. It's obvious you're going to make more money if you do 100 contracts, but it doesn't mean you're doing bad if you only do, if you only got enough money to do 20 contracts. It's the percent return that's important, not 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 the dollars. Yeah, yeah exactly, and you can grow into expanding your contract sizes. So start at whatever price you're, or whatever contract size you're you're comfortable with. Uh, that's completely fine. Um, <clears throat> David, very true. I'm new to trading with real money, more losers and winners this week because I did the exact opposite of what you said I was chasing. Wasn't letting them come to me, live and learn. Yeah, that's uh, that's the nature of the beast, I guess you could say there, David. Uh, it takes, uh, takes a little bit of time to get used to it, but <clears throat> it'll, uh, it'll come to you. Just be patient. Patient is the one of the biggest successes for day trading. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is from Michael. Michael, you said put at first, then corrected yourself. Uh, okay, I think he. Yeah, I think he did. He said call after that. Um, well, because uh, Landon kept the call to his earlier. Yeah, he, Landon came back and said, "Yep, it was a call." Um, this is for, uh, or this is from Eric. Uh, do we know when the next Micro Moments trading seminar will be? Will be during trading hours? The question well, for Joe. We, we haven't set one up yet, and that's me and you and Michael. We're going to do that. We just being nervous. We said that. We'll yeah, do we'll, we'll, we'll set one for. We'll set one. We'll, we'll make the decision next week on what date we're going to do one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll set that date and then uh, not sure if it will be on the weekend or if it will be during the week. Uh, not not exactly sure yet. So, um, okay, uh, this is from Peter. What I meant to what I meant is, do you enter the cell immediately or hold entering until you see your number or not? Yeah, you don't really want to hold anything. Uh, just just enter the enter your profit number as soon as you your profit target as soon as you enter the trade. Uh, just in your mind, have a set amount. Okay, I want three. I want three cents. Set it really low, not really low, but enough to make a pay the commission and enough to you know make a profit. So um, set it three or four cents. If it moves up really quick past it, cancel it and just let it run. Or, um, or uh, you know, cancel it and, and adjust back downward if the price is moving the opposite direction. But you always want to have a profit target set as you enter or have something set in your mind because it just gets you in that consistent, all right, in that consistent pattern of, okay, I want this amount and that's it. I'll be happy with whatever I get at this, at this price or at this uh, profit target. Uh, the more he's like, all right, well, I hope it goes up eight cents. I mean, if you have that mentality, you're going to, your, your account's going to dwindle very quickly. So just, just set the profit target to whatever you, whatever you think, uh, you can get at that current time, depending on the volatility and the direction and all that stuff like that. So, um, uh, Kathy is today being recorded. Can we listen again somewhere later? This Joe? is this this is being recorded and it will be posted on YouTube. Okay. Uh, Landon, understood, guys. Thanks for clarifying, Joe. All right. We got a pretty yeah, caught up. up. Yeah. Um. Let's go ahead and uh, enter. I feel that I was on the 184.5. Filled at 92 cents. Up to 96. Um, 97 now, 98. Let's set a set of close for, uh, da, 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 da. see if we can get a dollar and fill that a dollar one. There we go. Nice. 
Okay. Looking at this uh, 205 call again, the spreads are pretty big right now. That's a 9.8%. That's fantastic on that queue. That was a really good push there. Uh, the spreads on this are huge. So that means the spreads are, are uh, this big sometimes. It's, you know, the price is moving really fast. But um, dang, Apple's crashing oh right back down. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, pushed up to 205.43 and then snapped back down to 205 very quickly. I'm glad we didn't enter that. They dropped all the way down to 40 cents. <laughs> oh my God. Jeez. Oh man, I'm glad we got out when we did. That's why you set an immediate profit target. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> if there wasn't a better case in point, like, <laughs> don't yeah. hang around for this crap. Oh wow. man! Wow, I've never seen it drop fifty cents that fast. Oh man, well that's what you're doing dealing with on uh, on Fridays. So yeah, like, Friday, yeah. like yep. get a little crazy, a little risky. If you're not comfortable with these speeds, you know, just go to the next week. Uh, yeah, that that type of option move did not happen on next week's expiration. I can tell you. Yeah, but uh, we got in enough for. Uh, uh, this is from Landon. Please, can I ask that you don't set that micro moment seminar for the first two weeks of September? I'll be sailing, so I won't have access to the internet and won't be able to trade or attend seminar, and I hate to miss it. I know okay. it's really selfish, but smiley face. Yeah, uh, I think we actually we have other seminars that are going on in September, so that shouldn't be an issue. I think I've got a two day the last weekend of September, Saturday, Sunday, September. Okay. What I mean by other seminars is the other techniques that are that are traded. Um, pushing up really strong again here, but uh, please don't forget to say the strike price. Okay. This is from Kathy. I yeah, we tried to enter that call at 121, but we missed it. It's at 130 now. Tim, I just caught 20 cents on Q. Wow. Awesome job, Tim. Way to, way to predict that. Uh, that was unexpected from Tim again. Yeah, that was. That was very unexpected. But yeah, uh, his monthly charge is going up too. What's that? His monthly charge is going up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, but, forgot uh, the thing that we, we forgot the same thing that we scrape off two points on every one of these trades. They do. When they're both <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> we operate it like tax brackets. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's kidding, by the way, guys. He's kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Dow Jones is up 229.94. Spies up. SPY is up 331. Three dollars 31 cents. Yeah, that that spike just set Q up sixty cents, uh, six over sixty cents. Yeah. And again, uh, guys, that's why the delta is not that accurate. Um, you know, it's a good baseline, but it's not not something to base too heavily off of. Uh, this is from TJ. Uh, made three trades today, plus five cents. Negative four cents and plus nine cents on Apple calls today. Awesome stuff, man. That's good stuff right there. Uh, that means you are up 10 cents for the day. That's fantastic. Uh, yeah, we're, 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 you, you guys have done three trades and we're up 13.2%. One loss, about 1%. I mean, that's, oh. that's, that's net of that. So we're, we're net 13.2. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tim is up 7% for the day. Awesome stuff, Tim. Work. Uh, David, given the, sh the string of losing trades I've made, can I get a discount? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, equality is equality, Joe. Yeah. Makes sense to me. <laughs> uh, Well, it's settled back down, and 184.5 is back to 96 cents right now. 193. 
But uh, wow, that was crazy. I've never seen anything a move in 40 cents negative in that quickly. Actually, it was 50 cents, to be honest. So, we're a little topped out on Apple here. <laughs> also, you guys can tell by the volume and the volatility of the market. Look at the size of the Bollinger Bands recently. Uh, since 9.39 all the way to 10.19, so almost an hour of just straight and tight Bollinger Bands. Uh, that's another, another indicator of volume and volatility is, you know, the expansion and depression of uh, Bollinger Bands. So, <clears throat> and that's a good, uh, another good indicator. And another one is the E4 all the way at the bottom. Um, I mean, look at, look at the little ticks. Down there. I mean, it's, they're almost non-existent. Well, I've got to mention some more. If anybody uh, wants these per trade breakdowns, because in that newsletter it goes out at the end of the day, it just gives you how much was earned for the day. Uh, I send out a tweet, uh, and uh, you can sign up it's, uh, at uh, CSE, three of them capitalized, and then uncapitalized twit, T-W-I-T, and you get the individual trades. And I send that right after the session ends. So. Apple's a little bit confused on what it wants to do here. E3 and E2 have worked their way pretty high though, so you might see a bit of a down wave soon if we can get any sort of speed for it. But based on how the climb up was, I'm not super, you know, anxious to jump in a put after it's already moved down because uh, that whole leg up was just a little push and then it would turn around right away. And those turnarounds can really get you on Friday. So You know, kind of what's interesting to reach that uh, that projection I make if you got two thousand bucks put in your account, never never add to it in two years. You got eight hundred thousand bucks and just that's only doing six percent a week, which is what twenty four percent, twenty four percent a month. And and you guys do that in most days. Say so, say so take one of your trades, take that you know, 4.4 and, and 2,000 bucks in 24 months, you can retire. Yep. And consistency is the key here. Yep. Uh, so. Brennan's looking like he's figuring out the uh, consistency. He just did a triple Q put 185.5 for 3.8%. Nice. Good stuff, Good Brennan. Brennan. A lot of good, a lot of people rocking it today. It's good stuff, but uh, I think it's pretty pretty uh, just kind of boring and settling down here. So I think uh, I think I'll probably head off for the morning. And uh, are you guys, Mike? Are you staying on? Uh, no, Apple didn't open up from that pinch. It was just narrowing, so probably gonna slow down even more. Okay, y'all hold on. Um, how do we do today, Joe? Yeah, hold on. You say, Mr. Teller, babe, they're, they're going to leave here now, and this is going to stay on until 3 o'clock when the market closes. You'll see a widescreen, throw that widescreen up there, please, Tony. 
If you have not done this, send an email to support compoundstockearnings.com, attention Sue Ann, and make sure your name is on there and your phone number, your cell phone, so she can send you a text if they decide to come back together or individually, which will be dictated pretty much by the market, and you'll get a text, you'll know it before they get back. Uh, okay, it's been a great day, guys. And hey, just think of this other possibility, too. They can do this in an IRA in a Merrill Lynch account that charges no commissions. I mean, you yeah. know, you're talking about an ideal deal, no taxes, no uh, no, no commissions. Huge. True. You can't touch it, but still. It's okay. if, if, in fact, you guys get on, uh, be sure and shoot me a, uh, a text and let me know what you make, okay? All right. Yeah. Last, good. last thing I want to say is because it's consolidated, it could, uh, given the week we've had, it could liven up at some point. Um, if I get back on, uh, sometimes people get back on later than I do. Uh, we are going to be on next week's uh, expiration. That is one thing we consistently do is if um, if we do come back on on Friday, that's the time that we use next week's. Everything else is current week, but um, we had a question about that earlier. So we do use next week's expiration on um, on Friday after the first session, uh, if it's late this, enough. So this session has been recorded. Uh, this will be the third one we've recorded. We've recorded the one yesterday, and as soon as it downloads, uh, Sue Ann will get it posted over on YouTube. So it'll up later on this afternoon, I guess. So. All right, yeah, Mark says uh, I got a 3.6% on a cube uh, call trade. Awesome stuff from Mark. Great stuff. Yeah. So, all right, well, I hope everyone has a great weekend, and we'll uh, talk to you soon. See you later. Awesome. Yeah.